So, ladies and gentlemen, I think we should get this started. Um, we know that some people are still waiting to get in, but uh, I think we should start anyways, and the doors are open, so we are still expecting some people to join us. It is my pleasure to welcome you all to this session today, focusing on children's rights and business. My name is Kaisa Viking, and I am Secretary General of Global Child Forum. Global Child Forum is a non-profit that is founded by the Swedish royal couple in 2009. And we're hosting this session this morning. During today's session, we're going to focus on the telecommunications industry and how the industry performs in relation to children's rights. You will soon be hearing more from my colleague, Nina Falmer, on the results from our latest benchmark report. And after that, we will have a panel discussion where we have invited some of the more progressive companies within your sector on children's rights. So we will hear more from them. And that panel session will be moderated by Chris Blundell, partner at Brunswick Group. Welcome, Chris. But first and foremost, I would like to just hand over the floor for some opening remarks. Uh, one of our founders, Her Majesty the Queen of Sweden, she would very much have liked to be here today, uh, but unfortunately couldn't, but she sent us a message. And she will be followed by opening remarks by GSMA's own Director General Mats Granryd. Senoras y senores, ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to welcome you to this session hosted by Global Child Forum. While I wish I could have been with you in person, I'm happy that I can share a few words with you about the importance of your participation in this event. Many years ago, I made the decision to devote much of my time to children's rights. In 2009, His Majesty and I founded the Global Child Forum here at the Stockholm Palace. We wanted to provide a meeting place for business leaders to come together to discuss with all parts of society, children's rights and how to foster progress in this field. Over the past decade, we have seen that companies are transitioning from a profit-only model of business to a purpose-driven model of leadership. They are becoming corporate citizens. To this shift, we are seeing companies deliver real societal impact. And your sector, technology and telecommunication, is an enormously important actor. Not only for the global economy, but for society itself. The COVID-19 pandemic has taken an unthinkable toll on society, none the least on children. They are experiencing a social, emotional, and academic ordeal that will require more than a vaccine to remedy. From the outset of the pandemic, there was a growing reliance on technology. Our educational systems now depend on it, and as the influence of technology on children's lives continues to expand, your sector becomes even more important in creating a safe world for children, for all children. As we will hear this morning, technology and telecommunications companies are now creating initiatives based on insights from Global Child Forum's benchmark reports. These companies are choosing to lead by example and also to generously share their experiences and best practices with others. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to thank you all for participating today. I wish you all an informative and inspiring event. Thank you. Muchas gracias. So, thank you very much. Uh, uh, my Queen, uh, Your Majesty's uh, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, it is my 
real privilege to be here with you today and, and for the launch of this Global Child Forum's Tech and Telecommunications Benchmark Report, which I think we're all looking forward to, to understand how we have performed as an industry and individual companies. On behalf of the, the mobile industry and as a fellow Swede, it is uh, for me really, really wonderful to welcome uh, a Swedish global leader in child rights uh, to the heart of our industry. So, so you should feel very welcome, Kaisa and Annette. Now, I want to start today with a question. What do the mobile uh, industry and the conventional rights of the, chill, of the child have in common? Well, it's been 30 years since the first GSM call, and just over 30 years since the Convention of the Rights of the Child was first signed. Uh, yeah. and, and some would say that we have actually grown up together. And others would realize that the responsibility to children lies at the very heart of both industries. In 1989, when the CRC was first signed, seven million people had mobile phones. Yes, just seven million people. Not just in one city, but seven million people total around the world. Today, we know it's 5.3 billion people that have a mobile phone. So just take a moment to think about that growth and consider how much the world has changed. Over the past three decades, mobile has grown up and completely transformed the way that we connect and we communicate with each other. 4.2 billion people around the world now have access to mobile internet. 4.2 billion people. And one in three are children. One in three are children. Yes, really think about that. One third of those using the internet are children. That's huge numbers, big numbers, and will continue to grow. As technology changes the world before our, our very eyes, it brings new challenges and new opportunities. And as an industry, we have a duty to every single subscriber, every single customer, to ensure that we are building a safer internet and a better future for us all. And that obviously includes children. Because even though they are not our direct customers, we know all too well that they are avid users of mobile services. And so it has never been more important to ensure that we are responsible leaders. Now our vision at the GSMA is to, is to unlock the full power of connectivity so that people, industry and society thrive. And of course children is at the very heart of this promise. When children thrive, society thrive. Healthy children grow into healthy adults who contribute to building a healthy society. And as, as the mobile industry has grown up, we have led the way on some of the biggest issues facing the world today. Many of these issues with children are at the heart of them. We were thinking about children when in 2008, right here at the MWC, we founded the GSMA's Mobile Alliance Against Child Sexual Abuse Content with a group of international mobile uh, operators committed to stopping and ultimately reversing the use of online child sexual abuse content. We were thinking about children when we signed up to the UN Sustainable Development Goals in 2016. We were the first industry to commit to. We were thinking about the children and the future when in 2019 our board made the milestone commitment to transform the mobile industry and reach net zero carbon emission by 2050 at the very latest. And, last, la and just last year, we were recognized as a breakthrough sector from the UN Race to Zero uh, cl climate campaign. and something that we are very, very proud of. And we were certainly thinking about children when we launched our M-Power Youth Initiative in 2019, working with UNICEF and mobile operator members, looking at how mobile technology can uphold and promote a full range of children's rights. Mobile technology has tremendous power to enable the fundamental rights of children that we find in the CRC. The right to identity, the right to access information and education, and to enjoy leisure and freedom of expression. Across the world, many of our mobile operators have been innovating within this space. COVID-19 
highlighted even more an important role mobile connectivity has in upholding children's rights. As lockdown hits and millions of children around the world were kept home from school, connectivity became the only way many, for many to continue their education, to stay in contact with their friends, and to find ways of expressing themselves online. And of course, those who were not able to connect were left even further behind. As we emerge from the pandemic, we must continue to challenge ourselves as an industry to innovate for children, to understand their perspectives, and to incorporate their needs into our day-to-day -day business. Well, it's not always going to be easy, but with support from organizations like the Global Child Forum and UNICEF, we can lead the way. Collaboration across operators, across industries, across partners is absolutely crucial when we move forward. And we have already seen a strong sprint of collaboration that, is, that exists uh, among the mobile community when it comes to children's rights. From the Mobile Alliance Against Child Sex Abuse, to our Empower Youth Initiative, pioneer members like Vodafone, Telefonica, Telenor, Telia, and Sane have led the way, lighting the path they have taken to make the journey easier for those who follow. Well, 30 years since the first GSM call, just 30 years over since the Convention on the Rights of the Child was signed, 30 years of growth and development. Where do we want the children of today to be in 30 years from now? And how will we help them get there? As I look around in this room, I know that each and every one of you is already committed to building a better future for our children. So this week, get inspired, share your success, share your challenges, make connections, build partnerships, and then go home, back home, and act innovate like only the mobile industry can and together let's work to protect the future at all costs thank you very much thank you Mats. thank you thank you so much for those words and also thank you for the opportunity to to be here today before I hand over to my colleague Nina, who is going to walk you through the results of the benchmark, I just want to take a few minutes to address who we are, why we're benchmarking, and why we've chosen specifically the tech and telecom sector. So as already mentioned, Global Child Forum, we are a nonprofit. We're founded by the royal family um, 10 years ago or more. We're based in Stockholm, but working globally as a platform for children's rights and business. And for the last 10 years, we have been working together with companies and other actors to put children's rights on the corporate agenda. We do believe that you sitting in this room can truly make a difference in children's lives. We are funded by a handful of selected Swedish corporate partners, IKEA, amongst others. We've just opened up for another round of funding, and we're now including international companies to be able to expand and scale up. We see that there is a demand for the data that we are providing, especially from investors. Oh, can I take this off? Oh, thank you. <laughs> no need to use it too much, right? So how do we empower business? What is it that we do? What is our offer? Well, one thing that we do is we do benchmarks. And why do we do that? Well, most often success is measured in, in profit and loss. We all know that. But we've also heard yesterday, both from Alison Kirkby and Nick Reed, we heard it today from Mats, that profitable corporations also look beyond the balance sheet and look at what impact do we have on a social level. And that, to do that, they continually have to ask themselves not only how we're doing financially, but how are we adding value to society and how do we contribute to sustainable development? And to help companies answer these questions, uh, in partnership with Boston Consulting Group, we initiated the Children's Rights and Business Benchmark in 2013. 
And since then, we have been gathering data from more than 3,000 companies globally, making it the largest children's rights and business benchmark uh, of its kind. The benchmark score that your company receives helps you to get a better understanding of how your business impacts children. Our organization also offers you the tools and services that you need to use that information and start taking action. So all of our tools and services are open source and free to use for each and every one of you. Um, so please do that uh, and go in and check our website because everything is open and free. Much of the tools and services that we provide are based on peer-to-peer -peer learning. And an example of that is the Business Academy that we are right now running. It's a nine-month program specifically tailor-made for the tech and telecom sector, where we have companies like Uber, we have AT&T, we have Samsung and Vodafone, among others, doing that program together with us right now. As I mentioned, we also make our benchmark data available to investors, and there we do see an increasing demand. We are in discussions with some of the world's largest asset managers and investors, uh, and they are very interested in using our data in their investment decision making. We know that there's a lot of benchmarks out there, but honestly, this one is the only one you need, uh, of course, because if you put a child rights perspective into everything you do, that covers the whole view of what impact your sustainability is having. So why did we choose to start our sector focus with the tech and telecom sector? Well, I think that Max mentioned a few of those reasons. You are a progressive sector, but mostly your sector has a huge impact on children's lives. One third, was it, of the internet users are children. So your, your industry affects children from production to end user and the whole value chain. And children are particularly vulnerable in today's digital age. But there are so many opportunities as well for your sector to have a positive impact in children's lives. And you will hear more about it, about those opportunities from, from my colleague Nina. Also, in the panel discussion, we're highlighting some of the best practices that we see within your industry from some of the progressive companies. We do find some really progressive companies in your sector, but there is still much that needs to be done. And we invite you to really use this information that we are providing you today to catalyst and drive positive change uh, towards children. I'm going to hand over now to our research manager, Nina Falmer. Um, but to round up, I just want to echo what Mats Grano just said. This is not an area of competition, it's an area of collaboration. And transparency and cooperation is key. And your sector knows how to do that. Thank you, and welcome Nina. So, leaving some stuff there for later. So I am really happy to be here today to share the results of what we have been working on internally for over a year now, so sharing our baby with you. And um, I will highlight a few findings uh, from the report, but you will find the full report, all the company scores, and much more on our web at globalchildforum.org. We'll share the link with you in a minute. Uh, so there's more to, the more to, there's more to dive into. In these next coming 20 minutes or so, I will first give you a little bit of a background on the benchmark and how we do it. Sort of what do we look at? What kind of companies do we look at? Uh, then I will share the results and uh, also some of the high scoring companies. I will then dive into one of the main findings and talk a little bit more about that and finally uh, give some recommendations and suggested actions for you today. 
so as Kaisa said, we have been doing our benchmarks on children's rights and business with the Boston Consulting Group since 2013. But this is the first benchmark that we're doing on one single sector, which means it really allows us to dive deeper into the results and, uh, and understand what the industry is doing. We use, should choose our universe from the World Benchmarking Alliance's SDG 2000 list. This is a list of the 2000 companies that the alliance thinks will have the largest impact on achieving the sustainable development goals by 2030. From this list, we have taken the telecommunications, electronics, and IT software and service companies so three sub-industries, all in all 252 companies from across the whole world, covering all the regions, including 59 countries. As has already been mentioned here, we, we look at this sector because of the immense impact on children's rights and children's lives. And those impacts can be understood both in terms of risks, but also opportunities, as we've heard here before. So when we talk about the risks, they, they can be both from own operations and supply chains down to products. And for example, environmental impact and pollution can cause harm on health and development for children in the surrounding community. We also have working conditions for parents, decent working conditions, parents, youth, and unfortunately, we also do see cases of child labor, especially in the supply chains. But of course, as has been said here, we also have the issue of online safety and children being online in large, large and larger extent. And it, it's all from sexual exploitation, bullying, uh, exposure to self-harm and negative stereotypes. I can go on and on. Um, but, and also about privacy and data privacy for children. But the opportunities also abound, and they're sort of the other side of this. And the sector can really allow for children to gain access and participate in spheres that they would not have access to otherwise. Uh, we have seen now during the pandemic how being online has provided the possibility to obtain knowledge, continue education, and that is through access to the internet devices, but also the infrastructure and getting access um, to the internet. All of this helps children in their cognitive development and ability to communicate with others, and the sector can really help children thrive. So before I get into the results, I wanted to share just a little bit about how we do this. So we, during the years, we have developed a robust methodology that not only allows us to assess all the companies, but that also allows companies to sort of check on themselves, as Kaiser said. And we have 27 indicators that we have, uh, that are based on a set of principles called the Children's Rights and Business Principles that were developed by the UNICEF Save the Children and UN Global Compact uh, almost 10 years ago. They cover the full spectrum of impact on children's lives as we have been speaking about here from supply chains and sourcing down to products and customers. We assess companies' publicly available information. We do the assessment and we score each indicator from zero, which means we couldn't find any information. Five, which meant that we found information on the topic, uh, but generally on sustainability and human rights, but no mention of children specifically. And a score of 10 if we found information on the topic with specific mention of children. We then also share the results of our assessment with each individual company before, for, to be able to get feedback on that before we publish the results. We divide our 27 indicators into three sort of issue areas, or as we call them, impact areas. We have the workplace, where we look at the impact uh, around child labor, but also what we call family-friendly workplaces, support to parents, 
because parents are the most important people in children's lives. Uh, we have the marketplace where we, for example, look at how products impact children, as we have been speaking here about online safety. And finally, the community environment where we look at how the impact from operations and supply chains on children in society. Uh, and for, for example, their ability to enjoy full health, education, and other rights. Within each of these areas, we also look at levels of disclosures. So we have indicators looking at what policies and commitments are there to either uh, prevent negative impact or create positive effects on children's lives. We also look then at how this is being implemented into the company in forms of structures and processes. So how is this coming alive? And finally, we look at outcome reporting on risks, disclosures of non-compliance with the policies in place, but also on the actions, so to, uh, actions to improve uh, the impacts that has been found. Now to the results. So overall, across all companies, the average score, remember it was between zero and 10, is 5.2. So we're, it's not terrible, but it's not great either. There's definitely room for improvement. And behind this 5.2 average score, we see that there aren't that many high scorers actually. So they're represented by the blue bubble here, the leaders, as we call them, is 13% is out of the 252. Whereas the bulk of the companies are in the next scoring group, which we call the achievers, so the 47% here. But we also see that there is quite a significant share in the low scoring ranges. So we see this uh, as there is momentum within the sector and the industries uh, but there is a lot that needs to be done, both in terms of disclosures and actually talking about what US companies do around children's rights, uh, but maybe more importantly, better understanding both the impact on children's lives, but also how that impacts your business. If we then look, go down and we look at the, the industry scores, uh, we see that electronics uh, are in the lead with an average of 6.0. Telecommunications in second place with 5.0. And the difference that we see, see between electronics and telecommunications is that electronics are scoring better around the issues of child labor and uh, support to parents. Whereas telecommunications score slightly better when it comes to the issues on uh, products and, and marketplace. Uh, but still it's not that high and there is definitely room to, to raise that score. And finally we have the IT software and services who are sort of the laggards of the group with an average score of 4.3 and there are actually no high scorers within this group. And let's see if this works, yeah. So the top three scoring companies across the board are Vodafone, Telenor, and Deutsche Telekom. Uh, but I have more. So if we then go to each of the industries, uh, the top five scoring companies per industry is for electronics, it's Samsung, who are in the lead with an average score of 9.0, but closely followed by LG Electronics, Compel, Hewlett Packard, and Ericsson. The telecommunications, we have Vodafone in the top with the highest score of all at, with 9.3. But Telenor are very close behind with a 9.2. Then we have Deutsche Telekom, Telefonica and Telecom Italia. And we are really happy to have Vodafone, Telenor and Telefonica, three out of the high, five high scorers on our panel today to, to tell more about what you do. And finally, we have IT software and services, where, as I said, we have no high scorers, but Amazon and Adobe are the highest scoring companies within the sector, as the industry with the 7.3 average score shared there. And as I said before, you can find all the company scores on our, uh, on our webpage as well. This is just the, the top selection. 
Now I wanted to go a little bit deeper into one of the main findings. And this has been mentioned already today, that um, the, the, one of the main impacts that the industry has on children is around uh, products and services. And when we, we call this the marketplace area, and what we look at within the marketplace areas, for example, how companies report on what they do uh, to protect children in relation to the service, if there is a risk for harm, um, but also around eliminating discrimination uh, in access for children. Are children actually able to, to use the product or service in the, in the way that it was meant? Um, and is the distribution equal? Can, can we provide access to children who need it? This is uh, especially relevant around devices and, of course, infrastructure, which uh, the telecommunications industry is, is definitely has a leading role in. Uh, but we also look at how product development, innovation, and how that can support children's rights and what actions are being taken in that field. And when we look at the, the data from, from this area, the average score is actually only at 3.4 across all companies uh, assessed, which is quite low. The top score is, three, is 10. And for the workplace area, which if was around um, child labor and supporting parents, is at 5.6. So this is the area where we really see that, that we can step up. And we, we've been talking a lot about the dangers and uh, sort of we all know the risks of uh, children having access to devices, being online, and it's an important issue. But I really want to focus on sort of the other side, sort of the opportunity around using innovation and product development to support children and protect them. Oh, sorry, that was not revealed too early. Um, and two of the companies that we see do this is Vodafone, who has developed a, a learning platform that sort of provides an integrated solution both inside and outside of the classroom, and it has really seen, it has really been useful, especially during the last two years with the pandemic. And this is a commercial solution, but it also supports children. We also have Microsoft, who have long been working on sort of building in safety measures in their product development and not doing this alone, but working with others to ensure that the measures they take have the desired effect, but also share it with others and develop together to ensure the maximum effect. Microsoft also consults with uh, teenagers and youth in their different markets on about their experiences about online life and devices and electronics to help them in their product development. And all of these cases, sorry, are available on the web as well and you can, you can read more about what they do in detail. Or go and find them here and ask. Um, finally, I wanted to uh, share with you a little bit about um, what companies have been doing in response to the pandemic. So when we started collecting this data a year ago, we really felt we wanted to understand what has been done uh, by individual companies and how much has been done. And we are really happy to see that many companies really did step up. Um, and if we continue on the track of product development and service, however, we, there were only a actually a handful of companies that reported initiatives uh, in relation to COVID-19 specifically. I have three of them here. Uh, we have Millicom, who sort of ramped up their already existing online safety training for children in the markets due to sort of as a, as a response to the increasing presence online by children. Telia, who have, is another company who had long been consulting children about their experience of online life. Um, they went out and asked 7,000 children about their experiences about online learning during the pandemic, and also shared the results publicly. 
And finally, we have Intel, who also had an existing program, but really stepped it up in terms of supporting the detection and reporting of child sexual abuse materials, which we have all seen increase during the pandemic, unfortunately. But we also looked at other types of initiatives. So one of those was, for example, Samsung, who implemented uh, support to parents and caregivers both in the workplace, for example, through FlexiWork schemes, allowing them to manage their time more freely to support their children at home, but also mental support to children or to uh, parents who were trying to cope with the difficult situation. And we actually found 39 more companies reporting on similar initiatives about supporting parents, employees, or for, uh, through suppliers. And finally, we found 66 companies who reported initiatives uh, to support children in the community when it comes to access to healthcare and education, for example, that is not directly related to the product, but more of a, what we might call a charity initiative. So all in all, 109 uh, initiatives around COVID, and we will probably see more. So now we come to what you can do um, and sort of summing up what has been said here, we really see that there is a huge untapped potential in product development and innovation to support children. Online, through devices, and really sort of support children in the development and discovery of the world and making sure that that is safe. And to do this, it's good to include children's perspectives. So children are quite savvy in terms of what they want and what they need. And when their viewpoint is being considered, you not only get a new perspective on your business um, and how that may develop, but also you're better equipped to actually protect children's specific vulnerabilities. And Today already, as I've said, you can now find the assessed company scores online, or maybe a competitor's, what do I know? Uh, you can also, we have also sent out the detailed scorecards to each individual company who was assessed. This was sent to the responsible for sustainability within the company, and if that was not you, uh, you can request it from benchmark at globalchildforum.org, or come up to one of us afterwards and we'll help you out. And finally, we would love for you to communicate your results and spread the word about the report. And we have developed a communications toolkit to make that as easy as possible. And it's also on the report web. And uh, if you want to use social media, you can use the hashtag GCFbenchmark22. I think we should have, yeah. So this is a QR code for you to get straight to the report page. And with that, I want to thank you for your attention and welcome Chris Blundell, our moderator up here, together with the speakers. And Do you want to grab this one? That's it there. There you go, perfect. There you go. Two. Why don't you grab these two? We're, I'm not sure. Oh, you want to do this? Yeah. Uh, yep. Um, why don't you go here and. Wait. Okay. <laughs> okay, perfect. Good morning, morning. 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 Um, Well, thank you very much. Um, and welcome to the panel discussion. So, uh, the, the purpose now, we're going to explore some of the themes and the ideas that we've heard about so far this morning. We're going to look at um, how some of the, the topics that have been talked about in the report come to life uh, in real life for the, the companies in the sector and what, what people are really doing. So firstly, it's my pleasure to welcome uh, Shamil Youssef, uh, the CEO of Vodacom Group, here representing Vodafone Group as a whole. Um, Sigra Brecker, the group CEO of Telenor. Uh, and Maya or Mathabal, um, the Director of Environment and Human Rights at Telefonica, and of course Nina uh, from, uh, uh, from Global Child Forum. Um, if I can, first of all, first question to you, Nina, just quickly. You talked us through the report there. What was the most surprising thing 
uh, that you found from doing that research? Thanks, Chris. Well, it's, it's funny because it, maybe it's not a big surprise. It's a pattern we have seen across other, um, other benchmarks, but, but still sort of the school for the products and, and services from the sector was a bit surprising. I might have thought it would, it would be higher, actually given the, the discussion on specifically online safety and sort of the, the debate around that. Um, but we also see that there are companies doing good things and I really look forward to, to hearing from our panelists about that. Okay. Well, with that, let's, um, let's kick off the discussion. Uh, the first question, first topic area really is we want to try and define um, what this actually means for companies you know, in everyday life. And, and very pleased to have leaders of some of the world's biggest networks uh, here with us today. And really, it's a, a broad question to try to define this. What does, how important are children's rights for you uh, in running your business? We heard from the report that it's about striking a balance between protecting from risk uh, and also creating opportunity. But we'd love to hear um, how you think about it overall and how you frame it within your business. So, so firstly, to Shamil. Thank you. I think firstly it's important to, to recognize uh, children's rights in everything that you do. So the way we approach it is, is a couple of fold. Firstly, in the workplace environment itself. Um, and uh, so, so firstly, we have a, you know, a, uh, we take it very seriously and at a very senior level, uh, controlled by our group co corporate affairs director, we have a human rights uh, 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 almost a council or an internal working group where we consider children's rights at all, at, at all times. So, so that's the first part. The second part um, is then within the workplace itself is um, having progressive policies like our maternal and paternal policies and giving six weeks off um, you know, across all our markets, even in markets where by law you only have to give something like two weeks. We've made sure that you know, there's, there's 16 weeks off and encouraging uh, uh, fathers to take, uh, to, take the, the, to take the leave is also a very important measure for us. Um, so so that's, the, that's the one side. Secondly, we're very clear with our suppliers that you know, our child labor is, is, is just not an option and we don't tolerate it um, whatsoever. So if there's any inclination that a supplier is using child labor, that's the end of the supply for us. Then, of course, in, in, the, in our marketplace, it's how we design our products. Uh, and I think that's extremely important for us. We call it trust by design. And we build in certain measures to, to make sure that child protection rights are always taken into account in the design of our products and services. Um, and then, and then uh, also we have strong parental uh, products um, that um, protect uh, from a digital perspective. Uh, firstly, cybersecurity type uh, products. Uh, protecting for malware and so on, um, but also uh, making sure that within our products we have parental, um, uh, where you can control what, what the kids see, uh, parental controls, the times, uh, and so on. So, for instance, in our fiber products, in our mobile products, you, uh, parents have the ability to put settings for each of, the, each of their children, and that works very effectively. Uh, and then, of course, within the community and environment perspective, we, we take strong actions there as well um, from, from making sure that um, uh, firstly we have a, a very strong parental guidance program that we've been running for many years within Vodafone through multiple countries um, that have uh, both magazines and then online presence as well. And then of course we con continuously update that of, uh, and, and that became very evident in terms of the guidance that was needed uh, during the uh, pandemic. So you know essentially putting controls in all three levels of workplace, marketplace, and of course, community and environment. Fantastic. Um, Sigva, Telenor is a, a, a leader in, in this area. It'd be great to hear a bit of your perspective on this. Sure. Um, let me first start with thanking uh, the Global Child Forum for your initiative, because I think Benchmarking this across industries in itself is important to, to put focus on it uh, and, uh, and also use this as an, an example of uh, also getting more people to, to actually care about the area. And, and then I also must say that I'm a bit disappointed by the turnout today. Especially, I will say, from all the thousands of government representatives that also are here. This is not only an industry issue. 
this is definitely also uh, an example of where private uh, public partnership comes into place. But then to your question. For Telenor, I think uh, we are looking at this from two different angles. One is uh, the children that currently are not our customers, but our consumers. And as Matt said earlier today, one third of the internet users are actually children. Uh, and, and for us, it's important to, um, to take uh, a responsibility uh, uh, approach to this. Uh, when you are using our services, uh, this is also an area where we should show that we take the responsibility for usage that may not be that safe for you. So, for example, focus on online safety for us is important. Uh, the other area is also to take a responsibility for developing societies where we operate. Telenor, we are operating across the Nordics, but also in several Asian countries. And, and as we say in our purpose, we want to empower societies. And we see that uh, uh, children's rights uh, are even more important in some of the emerging markets than we have in, in the Nordics. So, for example, we are also focusing on very basic products like, take an example from Pakistan, where 60 million children are not even uh, having an ID. They don't even uh, uh, exist because they have not registered, uh, the parents have not registered them uh, when, when they were born. So together with, uh, with UNICEF, we have gone into the villages with a digital product, online product, to basically uh, give them their first ID number ever. That's an example also of very, very basic needs to bring children into the, the society, into, into, into uh, actually being uh, recognized and being realized, and with that get the necessary support later in life. So, so for us, this, this is um, both kind of an integrated part of our business, but also an integrated part of being a responsible uh, organization in the market where we operate. Fantastic. And, and, and Maya, we heard a little bit about the impact of COVID, but it'd be great to hear Telefonica's perspective on this and maybe touch a little bit on how the pandemic has changed things over the last couple of years. Yes, thank you very much for the question. <coughs> so from, well, from the beginning, we saw that the COVID was going to be a game changer, so that we have to take into consideration the, the special situation, how, how we can, can tackle this uh, from all the different perspectives. We carried an evaluation on impact of the human rights uh, on human rights from from the COVID and and how analyzing the different our different stakeholders and how the, the COVID was going to impact to them, and we found out that that children will be the most the most damage uh, of our our clients our uh, I mean our all, all our value chain because we are we are all, although they are not our direct clients we, they consume and they are also part of, of the family of our suppliers so so children as a as, as overall um, population was going to be a, a very uh, was going to be the, the most um, damaged by the situation and and that the breaches the socioeconomic breaches and the digital breaches were going to increase so uh, with this impact assessment we carry out a different different initiatives and uh, um, some of them were mentioned from other telco companies but uh, from our perspective we what we do we we we, we advance uh, payments for SMEs and that was not only for uh, for the companies itself but for the families that were depending on, on these SMEs and we and that was that was uh, very much very well received from all the uh, from all the our value chain we also uh, well uh, promote flexible working for all our employees. So at, at the peak of the of the pandemic, 95 percent of our uh, employees were working from from home and help trying to to balance no be, uh, between working uh, responsibilities and, and family situation. And we also um, have a foundation uh, from from some years now, uh, with together with La Caixa, which is uh, Pro Futuro. And we, 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 we train more than 500,000 uh, teachers in, in African and Asian countries. And we, we provide f 5 million, uh, 5 million uh, children to have uh, training and, and school from home and, and this situation. So those are some examples that we carry out uh, during the COVID crisis. And nowadays, uh, we, we're still there. Yeah. Brilliant. Well, and it's fantastic to hear so many things that are already underway. Um, and I think that 
What we've heard is for these initiatives to be successful and, and to endure, they need to be built into operations and reported on and be part of the business case overall. And I think we'd love to hear a little bit, as business people, you know, what is the business case for having children's rights at the forefront of your operations? And also, how do you provide some transparency on that? Uh, maybe that one can go to Sigba, first of all. Well, <coughs> it's, it's um, uh, really integrated in our business models. Uh, so it's not a CSR uh, activity. Uh, and we see it, as I said, both as uh, a way for us to protect our current consumers and future customers, but also a way for us to then be seen as a relevant a partner in all the markets where we op operate. So let me take four examples. The first one being what we do on, uh, on online safety. I think last year we actually trained five million uh, children. Classroom training where we go in there, we sit down and we talk about uh, uh, some of the dangerous uh, content you see uh, for, uh, for children at the internet. We talk about uh, an increasing problem that, uh, that the bullying of, uh, that happens on the internet is. We, we give the dilemma training and talk around that. And we do that both in markets like Norway uh, or in the Nordic, but also in, in Bangladesh or in, in Pakistan, for like example. We also implement filters and uh, blocking uh, of, of dangerous uh, content in, in our networks. The other area we are focusing on is being an employer uh, and the workplace. So, for example, we have implemented six month uh, maturity leave for all our employees. Yeah, across the uh, across our portfolio, that's not big issue in Norway, but it was in Bangladesh or in Pakistan or in Thailand or in in uh, Malaysia, even our operation in the U.S. to give everyone a six-month maternity leave. We are also implementing flexible way of work, uh, such that parents can take care of their kids in, either in the morning or in the in the evening. Uh, child care at work uh, is another example of that. The third area, it's, it's then doing, working together with, uh, with partners and suppliers in the markets where we are. I mentioned what we do in Pakistan on registering uh, new, new uh, born. Another example, it's trying to deal with child labor in many of the markets uh, uh, where we operate. And the fourth area, it's also what you talked about, it's, uh, it's education. We have especially focused on what we call tech for girls trying to bring girls uh, more interested into the STEM uh, topics or in the tech, uh, technology areas. And again, we're trying to do that both in the more developed part of our portfolio, but also in, um, in the, the more emerging market. So out of this, we see that this is integrated in, in, in positioning ourselves uh, better for our consumers that later will become customers, but also we are then being seen as a responsible players in, in the market where, where, where we are in investing. Terrific. Maya, to you. Okay, from, from our perspective, um, for sure there's a business case behind, behind uh, child protection, but we think it's, it's not our business case. It's really the right thing to do, to do and the only thing that we can run our business. But having said that, what we have seen is that uh, now, nowadays our main stakeholders are very much caring about what we do. Uh, to protect children and to promote uh, their inclusion in, in, in a safely way in, in the digital area. So we are, we are, we are seeing, uh, talking about what are, uh, what are stakeholders, no? investors, and that was mentioned before. No? Investors nowadays, they, they really ask us about our, uh, our, our human rights protection, data policies, implementation, and examples. And, and because we are financing ourselves uh, based on, on ESG bonds, for instance, we, we really think this is going to be uh, critical, and, and so we, it's 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 good that we are we we are not only caring ourselves, but our stakeholders are asking us to go further on that, and, and we are seeing that from from some years to, to now, and also uh, from uh, other stakeholders, it's employees. No, they really go in the tradition of talent. It's critical for for our businesses, and and we are seeing that uh, many many. Many, many of our employees are taking care of in which companies are they working on and, and how we, we behave as a company. So we, we think 
that that this is also a change uh, in in the in the behavior of, of employees and and retention of talent it's going to be critical and we we have to behave good and and in terms of the of our customers for sure i mean we we need this products and service because our, our, the demand of, of families, the demand of children are there. We, we have to, so I think the, the business case is there and, and, and it's good that we are prepared as an industry and as a company at California. And Shamil, lastly to you, does that sound familiar? Yeah, very much so. I think, um, you know, for us there isn't a business case and there should never really be a business case in such a topic. Um, it's just the right thing to do. I think, um, um, you know, making sure that we, and, and of course there's, there is, um, increased focus on, on this from, from investors. Um, and we think, you know, not only do we, we, we build it into, it's part of our purpose. Our purpose is to connect for a better future and how better to connect for a better future than making sure that you can take care of our children. I think that's an important uh, uh, part for us. Um, we also go uh, beyond, um, firstly, from an assessment perspective, continuously using things like the UNICEF Mobile Operators Assessment for child rights and assessing ourselves to make sure that we, we can continuously improve. But secondly, I mean, the pandemic gave us a chance to really step up. Um, and I think what, what we did very well is through our connected education platforms in Europe and in Africa, you know, we, we zero rated uh, access uh, for kids to, to platforms. Uh, in Africa, we did uh, a lot of discounting of uh, mobile data uh, to make it cheaper and more effective for uh, uh, for students to, to be able to, uh, to study uh, virtually, um, but, uh, but also making sure that all the university uh, portals and school portals are zero rated uh, across our markets. So, uh, and we're doing that in Africa uh, specifically so that, uh, you know, where, where, where the affordability is an issue, kids at least have the opportunity to, uh, to, to, to engage and be educated through these platforms. And, and Nina, one for you. You've obviously had the chance to look across the whole industry. These companies are right out at the front. What's, how do you see it when you look across the whole waterfront? That's a really good question. So across the board, I think what we see is that there is a focus on children when it comes to sort of charity initiatives and sort of you care about company or companies care about children. It's not that's not the issue. Uh, but it's more, we, we're lacking this connection that we've seen from the panelists about actually integrated it into operations and sort of day-to-day -day business. And, and as we hear here, it sort of, it makes business sense. And sort of, it, it's, it's not only, even if children are not the intended user, they are using the services in different ways. But I think it's something that you can also sort of, if you support parents, because they are often lost, they, they are confused, they don't know how to protect or support their children, and to provide that support to them, it brings customers and loyalty. Sort of. So I think there, there's nothing to lose, there's everything to gain, and I just think we need to get more people to do the same as, as our panelists are doing, really. To follow the leaders. Well, that takes us actually quite neatly to the third topic, um, which is we talk, we talked about heard about the the importance of children as stakeholders in their own right. I think and, and including their perspectives when when building products. And I think one thing I've learned today is that there's a lot more children on the internet as a proportion of the whole than I was actually expecting because often technology services are sort of designed for adults and the general population and then adapted for children uh, afterwards. I just, we'd love to hear a little bit about how you think about that, um, how you go about it, and, and what the industry can probably get better at as we, as we accommodate this more into every day. Uh, Maya, maybe to you first. Yeah, okay. So I, 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 from Telefonica point of view, we have been working for more than a decade, I think, uh, in promoting children's rights with a special focus on responsible use uh, of technology by minors. So I think that that's a huge topic uh, that really they are the most affected uh, probably uh, the most fragile no? For by, that can be affected by, by inappropriate use of internet and screens and, and fraudulent use. So we really have the responsibility uh, to, to take care of this situation. Uh, moreover now that we, they, they, there's an overuse of technology by children, so we, we really have to tackle this situation because we have a lot of opportunities, a lot of uh, advantages from, from this use, but a lot of yeah, risky situations that we have to take care of. 
um, from Telefonica, we know that we have to teach the, the new generations to make a, a positive use of technology. So to, to take this, uh, the, the better situation, but know the, the risks uh, from this, uh, from this uh, use of the online and uh, digital world. So we, we really support families uh, with this challenge. And, um, and in this sense, we have a comprehensive strategy based on different pillars. So for instance, uh, self-regulation and, and, and block content. Uh, we have alliances with the uh, stakeholders like Internet Watch Foundation, the government, and, and other uh, civil society, and all for sure our competitors here. Uh, we have collaboration uh, under ESMA and, and other institutions like YAC. We have uh, developed a special products and services that, uh, that uh, can help us to protect uh, children and, and safety and to promote safety internet and also safer uh, in audiovisual environment. And, and we, we work closely with our vendors because we need to collaborate with them to develop these products and services. So we, we know we are not substituting the, the family uh, responsibilities and we want to help them to, to, in terms of the education but also promoting technologies, uh, products and services. So we have, for example, a smart Wi-Fi uh, in, in Brazil and in Spain and this is on top of, the, of our uh, optical fiber and, uh, and it's allowing um, to put control parental in from the beginning, I mean, from the, from the really uh, the beginning of the network. This is very, it's helping, uh, well, millions of, of homes of home in, in, in these two countries uh, to, to really uh, take care of our children. But also, uh, well, we have other, other initiatives to really protect um, the, the security in, in the audiovisual environment to, 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 to protect the buildings from inappropriate uh, contents. And with our vendors, we, we really support them in the, in the initiatives that, we, that they take care of. For instance, the digital well-being that they have implemented in their, in their devices. And we have this uh, industry collaboration, which I really ha want to highlight, because I think this is not a thing that we have to do isolated. It's, it is no point on, on doing that. So uh, I think that it, it makes a lot of sense to continue this kind of, of collaboration. So we have the ICT coalitions, the Alliance for the Better Protect the min Minors Online, and the ones that have been mentioned before. Brilliant. And Shamil, you talked about uh, trust and, and safety by design. It'd be great to hear a little bit about how you go about that at, within Vodafone. I think the um, Trust by Design really uh, seeks to look at all human rights, including child's rights, and, and really embed that into the life cycle of our products, from the creation of the products to the usage of the products. Um, so it's very important for us to be able to achieve that. You'll see we, we recently launched a Vodafone Neo smartwatch, and this was, um, all of these rights were, uh, was really built in for, uh, for, for children, including marketing, uh, you know, getting parental consents and, and so on. Uh, to be able to do it. I think, um, so, so that's, that's extremely important for us that it's embedded from the beginning into the product uh, process. Uh, secondly, from an industry perspective, I think what we could do better is in a more integrated approach that covers the devices, the apps, uh, and of course the usage uh, of it as well. And things like the parental control po uh, policies and, and these type of things and products and services that we have, of course, provide that. But I think there could be a, there they, they is different forums in which we engaged in. Example would be the UN uh, Global Compact uh, Child Working Group, as well as the GSMA Mobile Alliance Group. Um, but, but I think, um, you know, we could, we could go further in terms of setting from the GSMA a certain level of standard that um, is expected from operators, but also from, uh, uh, from the different app providers and so on. Um, you know, in terms of making sure that ch ch uh, ch um, children's rights are, are protected. Right. Sigra, it'd be great to hear your, your final thoughts on that. Uh, what we have chosen to, uh, it, it's a partnership model, uh, both to be able to scale more than we are able to do ourselves, but also to better uh, understand the, the needs uh, and the situation the, the children uh, uh, would have. So we, have, uh, we are working uh, with uh, two global partners, it's UNICEF and it's Plan International, and they are helping us then to give input from, from the presence they have in all our markets, but also then uh, with their programs uh, scale the activities that, that we have. 
but we have also chosen to put this in as one of the uh, areas of collaboration with some of our technology partners. And you saw some of them uh, in, in your list uh, earlier today. So, so when we are signing up partnership with, with some of these uh, technology uh, partners or providers, uh, this is also a, a, a point there where we are putting aside, for example, uh, money uh, and efforts to, uh, to focus on children education uh, into tech. That, that's the way, the way we have approached it. Fantastic. Fantastic. Well, we're going to have a final uh, quick fire round to finish. Uh, one question to all the panelists and just give us your, your, your straight answer. Um, if this industry could deliver one thing over the next five years to advance the rights and prospects of children, what would it be? Um, I'm going to start with Nina at the far end. Oh, thanks. <laughs> so, no, I think it, it's just what the panelists have said here now to um, that children's rights is not an afterthought, but it's by design. Um, is something I, I would really like to see. It's make, when you talk about next generation, it's not about next generation tech, it's about our next generation and how they can benefit from this. Well, if only one thing, uh, I'm really worried about uh, online safety uh, and, uh, and the exposure that more and more children have to the content we have on internet. Uh, and, and we also see now real increasing trends in all our markets uh, when it comes to uh, how our children and, and uh, younger uh, generation is being bullied on the internet. That, that's a worry I have. Yeah, from my point of view, yes. Uh, I think responsible use of technology is, is the critical thing. Uh, there's many opportunities from the digital world to, to our children, and they, they're going to live in, in this way. So I think we, we have to take care uh, of what, uh, how we provide these this, uh, solutions to them. And Shamil, see you. I think uh, bridging the digital divide is, is key because I think um, having the child protection ri uh, rights is, is critical and, uh, and something and, 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 and being embedded into all our products and services is critical, uh, but also being able to use education for bridging the digital divide, uh, sorry, using uh, technology to bridge the digital divide, make it available because it's one way to ensure that we can alleviate poverty by, uh, by bringing uh, education through digital to more people um, around the world. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you. So it has been absolutely fantastic to have such great leadership uh, from all of these companies. And thank you very much uh, to Shamil, to Maya, to Sigva, to Nina uh, for joining us on the panel today. Uh, and lastly, just to say thank you very much to the Global Child Forum for driving this really important work and having us here today. Uh, and for the GSMA for, for bringing us together and, and hosting us all. And uh, hopefully everyone has something to take from this. Thank you very much for listening uh, and enjoy the rest of the day. <laughs>